Hello, family. This is Apostle Darian House. And this is Lady Tawana House. We want to thank you all for joining us today live here at Alabaster Vows Christian Ministries. We also want to encourage you all today to make sure that you stay focused during this season. This indeed is the greatest time for you to produce. This is not the time to stop or halt anything that God has purposed to you do. This is the time for you to continue to press forward in what you're destined to do because in the time when things are shut down around you, this is the time that God can give you the greatest favor and the greatest growth in your life. So we encourage you to stay focused and keep moving forward. Let's do it one more time. Come on, y'all. We will fight and we will win. And we will win. Of the Holy Ghost. And um, that is absolutely wonderful. Carlos Kyle's Kyle's bless you, sir. Um and um, Wonderful! It has been a blessing to us, to us. Um, but one today, the spirit of the Lord began to really uh, prick my heart um, concerning the mental health of the church, um, the mental health of the church. Um, talking about the mental health of the church, um, uh, He is concerned for our mental health. He's concerned for our mental health. He's concerned for us as a people and um, as leaders. Uh, I, I just believe that we have done an injustice um, to individuals by uh, not giving them the attention that they need um, concerning their mental health. Um, God is concerned about every part of us, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Um, he's concerned about um, all of us, and he wants us to be whole. Of course. And in order for us to be whole, that means that um, we have to definitely discuss this thing called mental health. We have to discuss it. We have to talk about it. It's a pink elephant in the room. Um, uh, nobody wants to deal with it. I believe this month is, did we not go live? We did. I believe this month, can you pull it up? Yeah. I believe this month is the month of, of uh, this is mental health month. Um, okay. Good. This is mental health month. And um, being that this is Mental Health Month, um, we definitely need to observe it. We need to talk about it, um, as well as we need to be real about it. We need to be real and we need to tell the truth um, about the fact that a lot of us are dealing with some mental health issues. Um, mental health issues do not run away because you're saved, Lord Jesus. Mental health issues do not run away. They do not uh, go away because you are saved. Um, we got to stop playing games. We got to stop um, telling people, listen, oh, you're having a problem? Pray. 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 Well, yeah, prayer is good, but sometimes you need a little something more than prayer. All right. Sometimes you need a counselor. Sometimes, and tonight we're going to give you the word concerning mental health. We're going to give you the word of the Lord concerning mental health. We're going to begin in Philippians 4, and I'm going to start at 1, um, and we're going to read. But we're going to give you the word tonight concerning mental health. A lot of us um, experience um, trauma. We experienced trauma during our younger years. Um, I wish I had somebody on live that would talk to me. We experienced trauma during our earlier years. Some of us have experienced trauma in our family. We have experienced trauma in our households. Um, we have experienced trauma um, in our family and being raised by our parents. Um, in receiving Thank you. In receiving or in going through that time of trauma, um, it leaves us scarred. It leaves us scarred. And there are times that we deal with these things later in life. All right? We deal with these things later in life. And so tonight, 
I want to give you some information from the Word of God as to how we deal with the mental health issues. Alright? I want to give you some information via the Word of God as to how we deal with mental health issues concerning the Word. Amen? Amen. It's in there. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I sound really strange, but okay. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Philippians 4. Let's begin at verse 1. Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Yes. Word of the Lord reads as thus. Yes. Therefore, my brethren. Yes. Whom I love and long for, right. my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Yes. I entreat Unia and I entreat Satan to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also to com true companion. Help these women who have labored side by side with yes. me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, mm -hmm. whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Yes. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Yes. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. Right? Yes. Don't be anxious about anything. I'm going to say that again. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Don't be anxious mm -hmm. about anything. Yes. What, what were the instructions that he gave? Come on. But in everything by prayer and supplication. But in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let your requests be made known to who? God. Let your requests be made known to who? God. All right. So he is saying, he is saying, listen, um, in order to keep your mental status straight or to keep your mind straight. Yes. All right. In order to keep your mind straight, what I need you to do is I need you to not be anxious for nothing. Right. So, so we've got to deal with the anxiousness. We've got to deal with this anxiousness because a lot of times my mental status is not something that's exterior, but it's something that's interior. Amen. My mental status is attacked by not necessarily something that's going on around me, but it's something that's going on within me. And so I've got to uh, 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 get uh, myself in a place that I understand that I can't allow stuff and things to cause me to be anxious. Right, right. Right? I am, it's not okay for me to allow things around me that I cannot control to cause me to be anxious. All right? So I have to make sure and very sure that I deal with my mental status by hearing what the word of the Lord says. Don't be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God. All right. So uh, uh, what I learned is some of my mental anguish has come not from what's going on outside of me, but what's going on inside of me. Yes. Right. Yes. And then I did not take the time to go to God and make my request known to him. But I made my request known to men. And in making my request known to men, I caused myself to experience anguish. Yes. yes. Because men were not giving me godly advice. They were giving me their advice from their emotions and their feelings. Lord have mercy. So we cannot expect for our mental anguish or our mental status to be kept up when we are not uh, uh, receiving godly counsel or receiving godly information. But in order for my mental status to be checked up, i got to stay in a place where I'm receiving the right information and not trash. That's right. Amen. That's right. Right? That's right. Because if I'm receiving trash, he says, make your request known unto God. 
right? So what he is saying is, I want you to release this thing unto me. I, I don't need you to go and release it to someone else who cannot fix it or who cannot handle it. But I need you to release this stuff that you are going through to me. I need you to release this stuff that you're dealing with with COVID-19 to me. I need you to release this pain that you're dealing with in your family to me. I need you to release the fact that your father was an abuser to your mother to me. I need you to release the scars and the anguish that you've gone through in your life to me. I understand that your mother was not there for you or she didn't love you like she should have but the place that you got to take it is to God and not to a man. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. That's what he said. I need you to release this thing to me. I need you to get this hurt to me. This was the problem in my life and, and, and why I ended up in a place that I was dealing with all of this mental stuff because I had gone through trauma. And in going through the trauma, there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of anguish. There's a lot of, of aggravation that I bottled up. And I never dealt with this pain and this anguish that I bottled up. Well, when it came out, it was ugly. Right. When it came out, it was uncontrollable. Yeah. When it came out, it blew up. It didn't look like the apostle. It didn't look like the preacher. It didn't look like the teacher. And this is what we have to stop doing is putting title before man. Jesus. Come on. We got to stop acting as if because I'm, I'm a pastor, I don't hurt. Or because I am I'm a missionary or I am an evangelist, I don't hurt. Listen, pain will cause you to say some stuff you don't want to say. Right. Hurt will cause you to act in a way that you don't want to act. So we have to be mindful that we take the time to do what the word says. He said, come on, with prayer and supplication unto me. That means I need you to pray and spend time with me. I need you to get in a prayer place. I need you to get in a place and I need you to spend time with me. And I need you to release this stuff upon me. Stop trying to take it and carry it because it's too heavy for you. Stop trying to carry, carry all of the hurt and pain. Come on. I know you was molested when you was nine. Come on, but you're 49 now. Come on. You, you should be in a place of, 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 of Lord Jesus. Yeah, it happened, but that don't mean you got to carry it for the rest of your life. Amen. Come on, because I have a God who's able to heal, set free, and deliver, but I got to release it unto him. Amen. I got to give it to him. I can't, the, the counselor can't heal me from the scars that I have from this ring. The counselor can't heal me from the scars that I have from seeing my dad and whoop my mama. Come on. The counselor can't heal me from the scars that I have seeing my mama go through times where she didn't know how the bills were going to get paid, how the lights going to stay on, how the water going to stay on. Come on. We turning on light switches and lights not coming on. The counselor can't heal me from that. But what I got to do is release it unto God. I got to give him everything because if I don't, it's going to affect me. Yes, God. Because it's trauma. Yeah, it is. It's trauma. Yes, so, so, so when you are in a car accident and you are hit, it's called trauma. Meaning that there is a possibility that when you open that door to step out of that car after the accident, your body could be different from what it was when you initially got in the vehicle because you just experienced trauma. There are times that the trauma does not show up at the scene of the accident. The trauma does not show up until days later after the accident. And then I say, my neck, my back, my leg, my hip. But it does not negate the fact that it was a delayed pain, but it happened at the time of the trauma. Yes. This is what God began to deal with me about. He said, a lot of us, we went through trauma when we were five, when we were three, 
when we were two. And now at 42, we're dealing with the delayed yes, pain yes, of are. the trauma. Yes, we are. Yeah. It was when I was 12 that my daddy said, you'll never be nothing. But it was at 41 that I dealt with the trauma. All right. This is what we have to understand. The trauma might not show up when, uh, 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 or the, the, the pain might not show up when the trauma initially takes place. But if you do not deal with it, yeah, oh my God. Oh my God. the trauma will show up later. Yeah, will. The pain will show up later. Will. The evidence that you was in an accident will show up later. Will. Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I'm learning about trauma is that I can't just go to the chiropractor one time. There's no easy fix to trauma. But I've got to revisit the chiropractor several times in order for my body to be realigned and in the right place that, that everything is operating like it's supposed to operate. This is the thing that I have to share with the church tonight. Is that we got to stop thinking that we can visit God one time and think that our bodies, our minds are aligned. But we got to continue to go to him in prayer. We got to continue to stay in a place of prayer and submission unto God. Because he's the only one that can heal us and that can help us to come over into a place where we can actually help somebody else to come out of their trauma. Amen. Lord have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter five. First Peter five. Hallelujah. 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 First Peter five. Uh, let's start at one. So I exhort the elders among you. Yes. As a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Yes. As well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Yes. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Shepherd the flock of God that is amongst you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's my responsibility as the pastor of this house, as a leader of the sheep, to shepherd those that is amongst me. Yeah. Right, those that God has released to my uh, 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 to my hands to shepherd, it's my job to shepherd you. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah! It's my job to shepherd you. In shepherding you, I have to be mindful of your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. Right. I have to be concerned about your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Will somebody say that in here? Come on and say, my mind, body, soul, and spirit. Yeah, all of them have to be in check, and it's my job to shepherd you. So I can't just shepherd your tithe. Wow. Why are you teaching like this tonight, Apostle? Because people don't like you to get in their business. Exactly. And we got to go back to the place. Come on. If we're going to become a holistic church and a healed church, we got to go back to the place that we allow our leaders back in our business. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm not talking about your, I don't want to be in your personal business because I got a life. But I'm talking about when your leaders are, 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 are in a place where they, they understand that I don't just want you to come in the sanctuary and holler at me, but I want you to uh, 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 say something to me when you see me falling off the rock. All right. Amen. Come on. Amen. I need you to say something to me when you see me not in the right place. All right. Yes. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. All right, so we got to be concerned about the mind, body, soul, and spirit because it's my responsibility to lead those that God has given me rule over. Yeah. Ain't that right? Come on, read. Exercising oversight. Yes. Not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. So, so I'm not doing what I'm doing as a leader to, to gain anything in your life. All right. 
I'm doing what I'm doing as a leader because it's my responsibility. Yeah. I said today while I was writing a post because we're discussing mental health on Friday night. I said, I said today, I said, is it, is it, is it because are, are we in a place of mental breakdown in the church Be because because pastors and leaders have have ignored the pink elephant in the room for all these years. Yeah. For all these years, all you can say to me is pray because you didn't know what to do with me. Because I was diagnosed with a mental issue. I was diagnosed with depression. I was diagnosed with oppression. All you knew how to do was demonize me and set me in the corner. All you knew how to do was cast out a demon that wasn't there. That's all you know how to do. Could it be that a pandemic was happening in the church before the pandemic showed up? Yes. Could it be that a breakdown was happening in the church before the breakdown happened in the world? The, 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 listen, uh, uh, it always comes to the church before it hits the streets. Come on. I tell people this. Uh, 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 listen, homosexuality would have never hit the church if the church would have stood up when it hit the streets. Yeah. We would have never been marrying men and men and women and women if the church would have stood up when it hit the streets. But because we uh, uh, were silent when it hit the streets, then it entered the house of God. So, so we're living in a time now that, that all we have for people is prayer. All we have for people is prayer. Uh, yeah, prayer is good, but then I need a little more from you, leader. I need something else from you, pastor. I need you to lead me uh, 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 to another place. You know, if you don't have what I need, can you lead me where somebody does? Right, right. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Come on, Reed. Come on. Not domineering over those in your charge. Not domineering. It ain't my job to be dominant. I'm not trying to control you. Right. I don't want to control your every move. I don't want you to call me when you get ready to sign for your car. All right. I don't want you to call me when you get ready to sign the paperwork for your house. Why are you teaching like this, Apostle? Because some of this goes on in the church. There are people that cannot make decisions unless they call their leader. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. There are people that can't sign for their their leader ain't paying no car note, but they can't sign for it unless they call their leader. Yeah. Wow. Huh? All right, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, read. But being examples to the flock. Yeah. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. So now we gotta we gotta get to a place that we humble ourselves and we gotta submit to our leadership. Yes, sir. Yes. So we can't have the attitude when our leader come to us and say, listen, I noticed some things about your personality that's not matching up with who you are, and I really want to sit down and talk to you. We can't have an attitude that who you think you is. You you don't talk to me about no. That ain't what I came here for. I came here to serve God. I didn't come here for you to check my mental status. We can't have that kind of attitude. We got to humble ourselves. Ain't that right? Hello, somebody. Come on, read. With humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud. Yes. But gives grace to the humble. Yes. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Verse 7, casting all your anxieties on him right? because he cares for you. Then he go again saying, give me all of your issues. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to help the church to, to be able to sustain your mental status during this time of pandemic. Give me all of your issues. Give me all of your fears. You don't have to go through this alone. You are not alone. I am your God. I am here. Give it to me. Amen. Right? God is a gentleman. Yes. So he ain't going to come and snatch your... He's not getting ready to kick the doors of your heart down and snatch your fears. But you got to be willing to give them to God. Yes, yes. Hello, somebody. Mm. You got to be willing to give them up. Mm. And so many times we're not willing to give them up. Because we like the way it makes us feel for people to exercise. Oh, my. Are you okay? Oh, my. 
Lord. You all right? We get used to a pity pocket. My God. Did I say that? Yeah. But we, we, we got to get to a place that we say, you know what? I want deliverance. Yeah. I want healing. I want to be set free. Is there anybody in here that want to be whole? Amen. Yeah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, so he said in verse 7, casting all your anxiousness on him yes. because he cares for you. Again, it's, it stresses on him. Yeah. So I can't uh, uh, always go and cast, cast my cares on uh, 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 Sister Cox mm -hmm. because Sister Cox got some cares of her own. Y'all yeah, ain't going to talk to me. Yeah. But, I, but, but, when, but when Sister Cox is not available, I can always cast my cares on him yeah. Amen. because he cares for me. Is there anybody in the room that can say he let you down? Yeah. He never let me down. Never let down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I really, really want you to think about this tonight. Because I believe in my heart that before the pandemic arrived, there was already a breakdown in the church. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. Long time. Long time. But before there was a pandemic, there was already a pandemic in the house. Hello, somebody. I, I'm, I'm just saying what I believe. I believe that before there was ever a pandemic in the earth, yeah. there was a pandemic in the house of God. Yeah, yes, yes. That there was a there was a problem in the house of God that we were not dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's called mental health. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's called mental health. How many of us have been afraid to even see a mental health doctor? Not yet. Hallelujah. I said I hadn't thought about seeing one for me, but I might need to. This is this is something that this is something that 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 the church have avoided talking about. Yes. We've avoided talking about, come on, we talk about tithing, we talked about giving, we talk about, you know, the importance of sowing, the importance of, uh, but listen, if my mental health ain't good, you can, I can't sow. Oh, if my mental health ain't good, I can't even get up and go to work. Oh, come on, if my mental health ain't good, come on, it's like having a broke bone. Mm. If my mental health ain't good, I can't even function. Right. Come on, this is what God is saying. Come on, uh, we have not been concerned about what's really real. Yeah. We've been concerned about super, uh, 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 things that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. We've been concerned because if I am whole, then my pastor will have to worry about me giving. Sure. If I am whole, my pastor will have to worry about me being dedicated and faithful. Right. If I am whole, my pastor will have to worry about me being in position to do what I'm called to do. Come on. When I am not whole, that I have an issue of uh, 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 doing the things that I am called to do and being in the position that I'm called to be in because my mental status is not right. Oh my God. My Lord. Jesus. Mm. My God. Come on. Yes. This is real. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. So we say to people, and y'all, I'm, I'm working by the leading of the Holy Ghost tonight. Mm. So we say to people, pray. Mm. Pray. I don't know if you've ever had an issue and somebody said to you, pray. Mm. Yeah. 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 Look like that's, that thing will hurt you. That, yeah. that thing, it's almost like they just cussed you, just called you Pretty much. out of your name. Pretty just, pretty much. Yeah. It, that's the way it feels. When, when you got an issue and they say, pray. Pray. Uh -huh. Pray. You just pray. Let God do it. Why? What happens when I pray and I still hear the voices? And I still hear the voices. Yes, Lord. I just want to be real tonight. What happens when I pray and I still hear the voices in my room at night? Right. I still hear them say, commit suicide. Mm -hmm. It's real, y'all. Yes, I still hear the voices say, you ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. 
The church has looked over this very real issue. Right? And put us in a place and said, just pray about it. All right? I want to give you what God said concerning this. He said, he said in John 14 and 27, he said, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Yes. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Right? Yeah. That's good, ain't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. He says, my peace I leave with you. But what I learned about this text is it took me going to sit on the sofa yes, Lord. and talk to a counselor yes, Lord. so that I could find this peace. Right. Hello? All right. It took me going to, talk, to sit down on the sofa and talking to a counselor, getting it all out. Because okay. as long as I was holding it in, mm. it was causing me to have anxiety. This is what's wrong with the church now. Because we're in a place now where we are an anxious people and it's because nobody ain't talking to nobody. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Nobody is dealing with the real issues of why you feel the way you feel. Exactly. Nobody is digging and going to the root cause of why you feel the way that you feel. How many of us in this room, and it's only one, two, three, four, five of us in the whole room, right? How many of us in this one room, and those of you that are on live, those of you that are on YouTube, how many of us have, have can sit here tonight and say, I have issues that nobody has touched the root of yet? Amen. I'm not 20. I'm not a baby. Come on. I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby in Christ. I know him. Yeah, that's true too. I know him to be a healer because he's healed me before, but I need help with this. This is what he is saying. He's saying, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Well, God is troubled. Yeah, yeah. Why is my heart troubled? Because I can't trust nobody. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Why is my heart troubled? Because the enemy has fooled me to believe that I'm in this by myself. All right, now, Why is my heart troubled? Because I'm in a position where I feel like nobody understands. Why is my heart troubled? Because I'm in a position that I feel everybody around me is jumping and shouting and how there ain't nobody being real. I'm, I'm in a church with a bunch of lying saints. My Lord. The word says, how do we overcome? We overcome by the blood and by the testimony. Oh my God, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. What, what, why are you teaching like this, Apostle? I'm teaching like this because I need a people to understand that let me tell you something, you ain't the only one that's dealt with depression. All right. I need a people to understand that depression has hit the pulpit. Yes, sir. Depression has hit not only the pulpit, but it's hit the pastor's wife. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. This, this, this is this is where we are. He says, he says, my peace I leave with you. Yeah. I need you not to let your heart be troubled. Yeah. But when I'm in a position that I can't trust you to tell you my ugly secret. Mm -hmm. This ugly thing that I'm dealing with, I've been dealing with this thing since I was 12 years old. Since I was 10 years old. Since I was 5 years old. I can't trust you because you're going to look at me differently after I tell you this. Alright. You ain't gonna respect the anointing of God on my life after I tell you this. After I tell you this secret that I'm dealing with in my bedroom every night, you ain't gonna respect me no more. All right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is where we are as a body. My God. My God. Where we've got to get back to the place, 
church that we understand that the church is not just where I jump. The church is not just where I shout. This ain't just the place where I speak in tongues. This is the place where I get free. Amen. This is where I come to free myself. This is a safe haven. This is a place where there is no judgment. This is a place where, where, where there is no judgment. Come on. What are you going to do when I can't mentally get myself together to get up and get dressed? And I and, and my, something in me tells me just press your way to the house of God. Get to the house of God. What you going to do when I walk in the door in my PJs and my head wrapped up and I ain't got my best hair on? I ain't got my best. What you going to do? Jesus. But this is what God said. I'll never forget. Oh God. That love and faith. One night we were there and we were praying. We were seeking God. And this young man uh, walked up to the church and he walked up in the sanctuary and he walked in and we were praying. Nobody really paid him any attention because everybody was praying and everybody was seeking God. And, and the guy walked in and he didn't look like us. When he walked in, he made a beeline to the altar. And when he got to the altar, he pulled out his crown royal and he put it on the altar. And when he took out his crown royal and put it on the altar, the next thing I knew, it was cigarettes on the altar. It was weed on the altar. It was, I'm talking about people all in the sanctuary begin to bring all their drugs, they they alcohol, they this, they that to the altar. And and y'all, I had my weed in my back pocket. I didn't even know it was in there. And the Holy Ghost said, uh, run your hand in your back pocket. And I did, and when I did, I felt the baggie in my pocket. I took the bag out and I took it to the altar. My, my because it was an atmosphere set mm -hmm. that was a safe haven right. for me to be able to do that. Okay. Yes. There was nobody in the room judging anybody. Everybody was getting their own selves delivered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning I'm walking out my own soul salvation so I don't have time to look and talk about you. Right? Pastor Lamar Simmons made us feel comfortable uh, in, a, in that atmosphere to understand that this is not a place of judgment, mm -hmm. but this is a place for you to become free. Yes. We got to get back to that in the church. We do. Come on, with a church say amen. 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 We got to get back to that in the church because if we don't get back to that in the church, we're going to continue to raise pastors that are mentally in a bad place. Yeah, Leaders that are unstable. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. But I got to get this peace through releasing my anguish. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. You know what I said to God when I went through what I went through with Josiah? I said, Lord, I said, I'm so tired of being fake um, for the people. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of showing up for my city mm -hmm. and acting as if uh, I got so much peace when I'm, I can't even sleep at night. My wife ain't looked over in, in a whole month almost to see me in the bed. Because I ain't got no peace. I can't sleep at night. I'm so tired of playing like everything all right when it ain't all right. Hello, church. It, it wasn't until I released it to him and then I released it to a counselor that I was able to find this peace. Anybody want peace like, like John 14 and 27 say? Come on. It's not until you release it to him and then you release it out of you to a counselor, to a pastor, to a leader. Come on. You got to find somebody that you can release it to. Remember he told us in the word. He told us in the word that it's my job 
when I'm strong to bat the infirmities of the will. Yes. Right? It's my job when I'm strong to bat the infirmities of the weak. Mm -hmm. Let me help y'all. Every pastor, every leader needs a counselor. Amen. I'm sure. Absolutely. Because if, when people are coming to you and dumping all their stuff on you, you got to have somewhere that you can dump it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of us need each other. Mm -hmm. All of us need each other. Otherwise, we're going to be a bunch of crazy people just jumping and shouting and ain't got no, no peace. Lord, have mercy. Second Timothy, let's start at 1. Let's start at verse 1. Second Timothy 1. This is good tonight. I hope it's blessing somebody. I hope it's helping you. If you're watching live or you're watching YouTube and you need assistance with finding a counselor, I have one that is a part of this church as well as I have one that's in the making. Dr. House in just a few weeks. And then I have several contacts that we can get you assistance. If you're not comfortable speaking with us, we can send you somewhere yes. Yes. to get you the assistance that you need. Yes. I'm not teaching this and then I have no resources. Correct. This, Correct. this that I'm teaching tonight is designed to pull the cover off of some stuff. Amen. It's yes, designed God. to help you, you to, to identify some stuff Thank and to God. say, hmm, I need to deal with that. Oh, I need to deal with this. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, that doesn't make me crazy. No, it doesn't make you crazy. Oh, all right, nope. Hmm, that doesn't say that I don't trust God. No, it doesn't say that you don't trust God. I trust you, God, but now I'm going to use every avenue that you sent here to help me. Mm -hmm. He put doctors in the earth for us. That's right. And we got to stop acting as if we, we, we so super saved that we don't need help. That's called pride. Yes, say that. Pride happens right before a great fall. It does. All right? Mm -hmm. Come on, read. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, mm -hmm. and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Mm -hmm. For God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. So so he says, he says, listen, God did not give us the spirit of fear. So when things come into our life that we do not understand there is a natural sense of fear that comes with it. Yes. Am I talking right? Yes. Yeah. How many of us experienced that fear when this pandemic hit? Amen. Yeah. Come on, just be real. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. How many of us, come on. Ooh, we, yeah. There was a fear. Can I tell you how I know there was a fear? There was a fear because the streets were butt naked. Sure was. Y'all yeah. ain't gonna talk to me. There was a fear because as much traffic comes through this neighborhood, there was no traffic. The children could play in the middle of the street and there would have not been any problems because there was a fear. All right? right? And, and what I noticed is that there was a level of fear pumped into the people by the news reporters. Yeah. They, they, were, they were putting fear in the people and then I watched as the church began to collapse. Yes. As the people of God begin to collapse, the people of God begin to fear this pandemic. They begin to fear, oh my God, look at all these people dying in New York. Look at all these people. They were showing New York.
York and wasn't even showing us our own city. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, they were they were showing us New York. They were showing us how how um, um, there's so many dying that they're having to put them in trailers. They're having to use refrigerated trailers because they don't have room in the morgue. They were they were showing us on the news. Listen, uh, uh, they were pumping fear into us. Yeah. Right. And I begin to say, well, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it. I'm going to handle it like this. I've never passed it through a pandemic. I'm going to handle it like this. Fear has never gripped me. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I couldn't bring myself to fear. Okay. Right. right? Right? Because prior to the pandemic, he'd already warned me that it was coming. Right. Right. Y'all yeah. ain't going to talk to me in right. here. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. He had already warned me that it was coming, and so he had already given me his peace. Yeah. He says, for I gave you a spirit, not of fear. Yeah. So I don't care what the people are saying. I need you to believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. Hello, church. How many of us had to snap out of it? I Come on. How many of us had to snap out of it? Because we had not said, I ain't going to nobody's stuff. I ain't gonna know it, but then your stomach told you snap out of it. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I ain't going. I ain't going to. Myself. I ain't going to know. I ain't going. I ain't going. I ain't going. I ain't going. But then your 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 stomach told you to snap out of it, right? Then I begin to watch people as they have been in the house for X amount of days, and then they started experiencing depression. Why? Because I got fear in me. I won't even walk up and down my street, so my body is not getting the vitamin D that it needs to, to drive away depression. So I'm sitting in the house, getting no sun on my skin, about to lose my mind, about to pull my good hair. Lord have mercy, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. This is what was going on, but but the but because of the word being in us, we had to snap out of that fear. Yeah. It was either the word or your stomach yeah. that snapped you out of it. He said, "I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a and self control or a sound mind, yeah. right?" What is sound? What is sound? Sound is truth. Yes. Right? Yes. What is true? The word of the Lord is true. What is true? He is a deliverer. What is true? He is a healer. What is true? He's all we we are already healed. What is true? Psalms 91 is true. If I make him my God, no disease, no plague, no, no nothing can come not my dwelling. That is true. Yeah. Hmm? This is what God is saying. This is how we got to deal with our mental anguish. Yes. My Lord today, this is good. This is good. This is good. Hallelujah. Just go to Jonah. Let's go to Jonah. We're going to start at Jonah 1. I feel like teaching a little bit tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Jonah 1. Uh, Jonah 2, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hallelujah. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed. Yeah. Right? So, so we already know that Jonah was given an assignment. Right? And because of his own emotions and because of his own uh, willingness to be disobedient, Jonah went the opposite direction from where his assignment was. Ain't that right? And so God prepared a fish for Jonah. Yep. Right? All right, let me help you. The Lord gave Pensacola, I'm going to use our city as an example. He gave Pensacola um, um, an assignment. He gave us an assignment. He gave us uh, what we are supposed to do and who we are supposed to be. Right? Yeah. 
and we went the opposite direction of what God told us to do. We sure did. He prepared a fish. The fish's name is COVID-19. My Lord. And it swallowed us up. Now we live in the belly of COVID-19. We now cry out in the belly of COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. We now cry out from the belly of COVID-19, God deliver us. God set us free. God fixed this thing, but God is saying, I can see him sitting on the throne saying, wait, but I gave you opportunity. Gave you opportunity. I gave you opportunity to become who I called you to become, and you chose to go the opposite direction. You chose to go the opposite direction from which I called you. I told you to do this, you chose to do that. Right? So now I prepared a fish to swallow you up. All right? So now Jonas is doing what from the belly of the fish? Saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress. Out of his distress. What is distress? What is distress? Fear. Fear, yeah, it could be, yeah. I, out of my fear, I got to be scared this big old fish don't swallow me up. I, like, I'm down here in the dark, Jesus. Are you serious right now? Hello? Yeah. So out of his distress now, all of a sudden he wants to call on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. When everything was good, Jonah, what you calling it? I just want to talk to the church a little bit. This is where we are. Come on. Out of your distress, uh, United States of America, now you want to call on Jesus. Yeah. Out of your distress, United States of America, now you want to get on your knees all around the world. Out of your distress, America, now you want to have a national prayer day. But when everything was good, America, where were you? Right. When I was searching the land, looking for somebody to use, where were you, America? Huh? You were concerned about your money. You were concerned about uh, 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 the, the 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 stocks and the and the trade market and the and the, all of this stuff and living your lavish life. But I could not find you when I needed you. Where were you? Where were you? Hello. Yes. I said to myself, I said, all of this time, I've never heard um, President Trump say anything about prayer. But all of a sudden, the pandemic hit and you want to declare a national prayer day. And then you turn around on the national prayer day and tell everybody to stay home. Stay home. Listen to me, church. What are we really dealing with? What's really going on? Come on. I'm going to declare a national prayer day, but then tell you don't gather together. Why is that? Because the enemy knows that when the church comes together, when we come together in prayer and agreement, he understands that the earth has to listen and the earth has to open up and obey. You cannot come together with the people of God in agreement and not see change. Amen. Yes, Lord. When we come together as the people of God, the earth is listening, hell is listening, heaven is listening, and the power that comes from the saints causes for the earth to have to do what we say. Yes, so I'm going to tell them to pray, but I want you to pray from your living room. I want you to pray from your bathroom. I want you to pray from your laundry room. I don't want y'all to come together in one place and get on one accord because we might experience a Pentecost. So I'm going to keep you away from one another. I'm going to call a national prayer because I want to seem like I love the Lord. But really, it's I want to separate you because I know what will happen if you come together. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. There's power in together. Yes, there is. Hallelujah. Come on, read. And he answered me. Mm -hmm. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. Yeah. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. Yeah. And all your waves and all your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. Yet shall I again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. Y'all hear this? 
So, so all of this stuff is happening to Jonah in the belly of the whale. Yeah. In the belly of the whale, the water has come over me, yeah. over my head, to take my life. Yeah. Right? Yes. This thing has come over us. What are you talking about, Apostle? I'm talking about nobody understands or has a remedy. This thing has come over our heads to take our life. I wish somebody could get this tonight. Come on. I'm dealing with the mental anguish that the people of God are experiencing right now. Come on. I'm praying to this God all my life. All my 41 years of my life, I've been praying to this God. And people that I've won't go to church with, people that I've worshipped with, people that I've watched preach the gospel, now they're dying from this thing. Come on here. I've watched you, God, bring people back to life, and now millions of people have died, and there, there's so many that they're doing a mass grave. Come on. God, come on up, Lord. This thing has come over our heads. The mental anguish of the people of God. Come on, I had a man of God ask me, what am I supposed to tell the people? What am I supposed to say to the people? About the house, how am I supposed to help the people? Do you see this? The mental anguish, it's not just in the houses of the pews, it's in the houses of the preacher, it's in the houses of the teacher. Mentally, we are in a place, we don't know what to think, we don't know what to do, we don't know how to respond. But God is saying, listen, if you know my word, then you understand my way. know his word so that I can understand his way. If I don't know his word, then I never get an understanding of his way and it will produce anger. It will produce anguish. It will produce a mental problem. Yes, yes sir. I hope this is making sense. I really do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said this thing has come over my head. The water's come over my head to take my life. Right? <laughs> huh? Holy Ghost, I hear you. The answer to this is obey me. The answer to this is obey me. Can I be transparent tonight? Yes. I'm going back to the word, but I got to share this. When, when part of my part of my my deliverance through this thing of dealing with children and family services was part of my deliverance was God was teaching me to humble myself. Part of it was me learning to humble myself, come down, right? And I said, I was a single parent for 14 years. I ain't going to nobody's parents or classes. They done lost their mind, and they want me to pay for them. You done lost your mind. I'm not doing it. And I did. I wouldn't do it. They said, oh, I'm going to send somebody to you so you don't have to go out to do it. They'll come to you. So when the young man came, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 21. I said, how many children you got? He said, none. I said, boy, if you don't get your tail out of here, I know so. How you going to tell me how to raise a child and you ain't got no children? You still living at home with your mama and your daddy. They still cleaning your behind for you. You don't even have to clean your butt good. Get out of here. Right? I didn't do the classes. Right? What gonna do? Went back to court. Just said, why you didn't do the classes? I said, because I didn't want to. What you gonna do? 
I didn't want to spend my money doing no classes. Right? The whole time I'm kicking against what I'm being asked to do, it's worsening my mental status. Okay. Come on and help the church now. Come on, help. Come on, help now. The whole time I'm kicking against what I'm asked to do, it's worsening my mental status because it's not going anywhere. I'm still having to deal with this stuff because it's ongoing. And every time I got to look at it, I get more aggravated. Right? Every time I got to deal with it, I get more aggravated. Right? I ain't going to do it. I just ain't going to do it. Well, I decided, you know what? I guess I'll do the third class online. Right? So I registered for the class online and I did the class online and I really wasn't paying attention to the class. I did the class while I was watching TV. Right? Got a certificate for the class. Then the second class, I think it was what? Seven or eight hours long? I said, he got to be out there mind. Thank God. For eight hours, gonna, ain't gonna do it. Right? I did part of it. Right? Mm -hmm. I gave it to my wife, told her, girl, finish this for me, honey. I can't do this. You're not asleep, can't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But what I learned out of all of this is I gotta participate. In my mental healing. healing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can't be stubborn and expect for my mental status to be whole. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotta participate in my mental healing. Yes. And a lot of times we come to church and we want a microwavable healing. Yes, we do. Oh my God. Yes. We want a microwavable healing because, you know, I know it don't take God long to do nothing. Yeah, but you've been suffering for 20 years. Yes, God. It's taking you 20 years to get where you are. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. I understand that, this, that the healing of our nation cannot happen overnight. Hey, mama. My mom on live, y'all. The healing of our nation can't happen overnight. I understand that. Because the, the damage of our nation didn't take place overnight. It sure did not. Are y'all getting this tonight? Yes. So, in order for me to get my mental healing, right, I had to humble myself and go through those classes and allow those classes to do what I had fear of and that was take me back. Mm. Those classes took me back and made me deal with some stuff back there. All right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. When that water began to come over Jonah's head in the belly of that fish, it made him deal with some stuff back there. Ha! Oh my God, I wish I had a church in here that would hear what I'm saying. I know I'm teaching tonight. Y'all ain't used to me teaching, but I got to do it tonight. It, when that water came up over Jonah's head in the belly of that fish, it made him deal with some stuff back there. It made him deal with some, some disobedience back there. It, it made him go back and deal with some stuff because I had the opportunity to go forward in ministry and do what God told me to do, but because I was disobedient, now look at where I am. Come on, when, when God is dealing with you like that, there is no way for you to escape the chastisement of God. Right. right? This pandemic that has come up on the earth, it has now come up over our heads. Come on. We watch your prominent pastors and bishops and apostles and people that have platforms lose their life. Their mamas dying. Their aunties dying. Their grandmamas dying. We watch 
watching them bury them at graveside services. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. They're doing services online. What is it causing us to do? It's causing us to deal with some stuff from back there. Come on. It's making us deal with some stuff. Because now it's causing us to realize, you know what? Can I just use you for example, Michelle? It's causing us to realize that you know what? I said some things to Michelle and Michelle said some things to me. But now in this pandemic and the way that our lives are flashing before our eyes, it don't even matter what you said, Michelle. I love you. I love you to pieces. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Come on, girl. This pandemic has come up over our head and it's making us deal with stuff that happened back there. It's not important. It, the, the enemy wanted us to believe that it was important, but it's not. It's not. It's not. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter that you hurt me. I forgave you without an apology. Oh, come on here. Yeah. What is this? What is this, God? Why is this? God, I need you to help me deal with my mental status. See, in order for me to help you deal with your mental, mental status, I got to help you understand my ways. I got to help you understand. There are some people that on their deathbed, they got a, I'm sorry. Yeah. On their deathbed, they fixed some stuff. But when they was up and doing well, everything was looked over. Yeah, yeah. All right. Huh? I'm sorry it had to go like this. I'm sorry it had to end this way. But God get the glory. That's what he's saying. This thing has come up over our heads. And it's making us deal with stuff. Can I be real? This thing came up over my head. My dad is the last person living as far as the older, my, my grandmother's children on my on his mama's side. And his dad's side, he's the last one living. He's the surviving son. Right? And all of this pandemic made me realize, you know what? It don't matter that he never been to my church. I don't care if he don't never come. He my daddy. And I love him. And I don't want to lose him. I don't hear what I'm saying. Sometimes it takes a pandemic for us as people to put stuff in perspective. Yes, God. And understand that the little petty stuff that you done fell out about ain't important because what if they die? What if they're not here? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Don't this help your mental status? Mm -hmm. Don't it help you to release some stuff? Yeah. I've been holding on to this. I felt this type of way. I've been holding on to this. But you know what? Tonight I got to let this go. Because if I don't wake up in the morning, I don't want to go to hell over some thoughts that I had concerning you. And you probably ain't even thinking about me. Ain't even thinking about it. Come on, Reed. The waters closing over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head. Y'all hear this? The, 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 the water was surrounded me. The weeds were wrapped around about wrapped about my head. Weeds wrapped around all around my head. Mm -hmm. Jesus, it ain't enough for me to just be in the bed of the fish. But weeds wrapped all around my head. God, it ain't enough for us to be in the belly of the pandemic. Yeah. But now weeds wrapped all around our head. Huh? We're in the belly of the pandemic. I don't know about nobody else's neighborhood. But in our neighborhood, it's been uh, six or seven gunshots fired at least two or three times a week. Ever since the pandemic started. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. There weren't no firecrackers. Nope. Them was nine millimeters. I know what they sound like. Yes, sir. Huh? It wasn't good enough to be in the belly of the pandemic, but weeds wrapped all around my head. Bullets flying in the neighborhood. Huh? 
Walked out to the front of the church, blood splattered all over the front porch. God ain't gonna talk to me. Yes, God. I'm trying to help you that 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 it wasn't just enough, but in the midst of all of this that's going on with you, Jonah, it's gonna be some other uncomfortable stuff happening. Yes. What is God saying? He is saying that one way or the other, I'm gonna get a yes out of you. Yeah, yeah God. One way or the other, I'm gonna get a yes. You gonna do what I ask you to do, one way or the other. Don't this help your mental status? Don't this help you to understand that God could have allowed you to die, but He kept you in the midst of the bed. Don't this help you to understand that God could have allowed the weeds to wrap around your neck to the point that they choked you out, but He kept you. Come on, read. The weeds were wrapped around, wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. And I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. When my life was fainting away, mm -hmm. I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. When, when, when my life was fading away. All right, man. <laughs> I want to tell somebody, as long as you got life, it ain't too late. When my life was fading away, my prayers came to you. Is there anybody in here that realized in the midst of this, it ain't too late to pray? Oh, God, yes. In the midst of this, it ain't too late to pray. It ain't too late to seek God. Come on, my, it's, can I tell y'all something about prayer? I couldn't come in Alabaster Box and just holler like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I waited and I went walking at the track. Mm -hmm. And I know the people in the neighborhood thought I was crazy. Because mm -hmm. I walked around the track and I hollered until I felt better. Right. And y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay. I hollered and God knew what my holler meant. Okay. It gave me relief. Mm -hmm. It gave me a relief that I can't even explain. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Jonah, I believe Jonah began to holler out in that time in prayer unto God. Yes. He says, my prayers went to you yes. in the midst of my life fleshing before my eyes. All right. Jesus. Hmm? Jesus. Y'all, in the midst of us seeing all of this death, we need to get to God. We do. We can't get so consumed with the news that we forget to go to God. Jesus. Huh? I'm talking about keeping your mental status now. Because some of us, the, 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 our, our mental status is at a point right now that we need to cut the news off. Yep. That's right. Y'all not going to talk to me. That's right. Some of us are not strong enough to watch the news right now. Come on. Some of us are not strong enough to watch the news. We're not strong enough to be watching funerals on Facebook Live. We're not strong enough mentally. We cannot handle it. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 6. I'm almost done. I pray this is blessing somebody. I pray it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Matthew 6 and 34. Okay. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Yes, it will. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. What does that Bible say? Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Mm -hmm. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Y'all hear this? Even in your being anxious, it will not stop the trouble that is set for you in tomorrow. Mm 
That's right. That's right. Are you hearing me? Mm. All right. So when 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 I chastise Josiah and he has Matthew six and thirty four was the scripture. Amen. When I chastise Josiah and um you know he has that anxiousness and I tell him that anxiousness ain't gonna change nothing. I still mean what I say. It's just like that with what's gonna happen tomorrow. Whatever is gonna happen tomorrow is gonna happen. But as people of God, we gotta learn to find peace and hope in the fact that he's already there. Amen. He's there before you arrive. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He said, I'll be there with you even until the end of the earth. Right? He says, he says, come on, come on, come on. Come, come on, baby, understand this. Uh, the days of a, of a man that's born of a woman is full of trouble. Full of trouble. Right? And then he promised us that, look, I won't just deliver you out of some of them, but I'll deliver you out of all of them. Right? He told us, before you even see the trouble, I've already made a way of what? Escape. Just as it's a way in, it's always a way out. This is how I check my mental status. Y'all see how these scriptures just rolling? Exactly. This is how I check my mental status because in the time that trouble finds me, the word of the Lord will roll up on the inside of me and I can begin to quote scripture. Come on, what happens when I quote scripture? It brings down my anxiety. What happens when I quote scripture? It brings me back. You know, some people meditate. Some people sit crisscross applesauce and you know, some people do that look, whatever it is, Hail Mary's. Hello? I quote scripture. Yeah, me too. Huh? When anxiety comes my way, oh God, the, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the saints run their in and they are safe. This is this is where this is how you check your mental status. You gotta get the word of God down in you so that you understand his ways. So that you understand his ways, you understand that, that this God that I serve, come on, he's concerned about my mind, body, soul, and spirit. So he's not just gonna heal me of cancer, but then leave me crazy. Hello? He's not just going to pay my bills, but leave me where I can't function to enjoy what he blessed me with. He's a holistic God. Yes. So that means that he's going to fix me in every place that I hurt. Yeah. Did y'all get that? Yes, yeah. All right. Let me give you another mental check. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. This is what we got to operate in. The fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5. I want to start at 21. Hallelujah.
We want other people to love us, but we don't love ourselves. We, 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 we've got to become people that love ourselves. I know that you love yourself by the way you carry yourself. A lot of people think that a woman loves herself because her makeup is pretty. Oh, but I found that, that women pack on makeup when there is something that they're hiding I, in themselves. I, yes. Makeup can be an, an, an enhancement or it can be a cover-up. Yes, yes. So we have to understand that we have to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, 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 patience. 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 We've got to be patient with one another. Dog on it, you got to be patient with yourself. Come on, how many of us have not been patient with our own self? I'm guilty. Patient. You still stuck right here? Where's your patience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kindness. Kindness. Goodness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Gentleness. Self-control. Self I cannot have self-control mm -hmm. when I do not have a good mental status. That's correct. That's correct. I'm going to park right here. I cannot have self-control when I do not have a good mental status. My mental status has everything to do with me being able to have self-control. Come on, I need y'all to talk to me. My mental status has everything to do with me being able to have good self-control. When my mental status is not in check, I cannot exercise having good self-control. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, Lord. Hmm? How many times have we in life been pushed to a place of being unstable in our mind? And when we have been pushed to that space, we have done something that we are now not proud of. Come on, how many of us have been pushed to that place? I need you to be real tonight. This is the only way you can get deliverance. Hallelujah. I was pushed to a place of Lord Jesus. I was pushed to a place and I in this place was not able to have uh, good self control because my mental status was pushed up in a corner. Any human you push in a corner will come out swinging. Yes sir. So, so I can't keep Poking at Michelle, I can I, I can't I, I can't I can't push her up in a corner and keep poking at her and and, and keep because 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 she quiet and because because she she ain't say much and because she she this she that you know these are the kind of people that kill you. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I see it on Snap all the time. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I, I can't keep pushing her in a corner and poking her and and prodding her and and picking on her and 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 nitpicking her. I can't keep doing that because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cause her to be pushed in a place that she gonna lose her cool. Yeah. Yeah. Her mental status is being challenged. And, and this is what God is saying is that the church yeah. has pushed some of us in a corner mm -hmm. and poked at us mm -hmm. and prodded at us mm -hmm. and picked on us. Yes. And we had to come out fighting. What are you talking about, Apostle? The church told me I couldn't do that. And I couldn't do this. And I'm not saved if I do that. And I'm not saved if I do this. And I'm going to hell if I do that. And I'm going, the church has abused the people. Yeah. And then we wonder why we're at a mental breakdown. Uh -huh. We're at a mental breakdown because the place that I came to receive help is the place 
that I came and got beat down. And got hurt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tonight, I want to make a safe haven for people to come, to write, to text, to call, to say, listen, Apostle, I need help. Amen. In this time of pandemic, I'm dealing with a lot. I'm dealing with a lot. I'm dealing with a lot in my mind. I'm dealing with a lot. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do from here. And I need help. Something that I'm learning in pastoring is all the time people don't need apostles. Sometimes they need the pastor. Sometimes they need the apostle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they need the father in there. Mm -hmm. Some, I mean, people don't always need you to be. You know, Andrea taught me that. I don't need you to be the apostle right now. I need you to be my dad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So tonight, I, I really hope this has blessed somebody. And I want to... Uh, what was the scripture in Matthew? Um, Matthew 11. Was it Matthew 11? No. no, it was Matthew 6 and 34 that you read. Matthew 6 and 34. 6 and 34, Carlos. I want to create a safe haven for individuals. Yeah. Because this is real. Yeah. This is real tonight. Is this, did this word touch you tonight? Yes. This is real tonight. Yes, it is. It's not something that we should take lightly or play with. This is real. This is what I've been saying. Thank you, um, Sandra Weeks. This is what I've been saying. I've been saying this. Through the time of me traveling through my text, mm -hmm. God began to deal with me in my mental status. What I've been saying is this. How many leaders did not listen to the warning from God to, ch to get a mental status checkup? Mm -hmm. How many of us have not listened to the warning of God from God to get a mental status checkup? And because we were not mentally right, we could not help the people that we lead. Hello? Mm -hmm. Growing up in the church, I never ever knew that the mental status of the people of God was even important. I never heard a pastor talk about the mental status of the people. I always heard the pastor talk about sin. Mm -hmm. I heard the pastor talk about tithes. Mm -hmm. I heard the pastor talk about giving. But I never ever heard or saw where there was a mental health clinic. Mm -hmm. I need you to teach him here tonight. Mm -hmm. I never saw where there was a mental health clinic, where there was a mental health awareness, where mm -hmm. there was a mental health because because people are people are dealing with things that are that are beyond the church. I never saw that where anybody in the church said, "Listen, baby, I'll go to the to the counselor with you, or I'll go to the." I never saw that. Uh, uh, I, I can't say that nobody did it. I just never saw it. Mm -hmm. It was not made available to us. So, so how does one deal with, how does one child, come on, because all I got is the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I, as a child, deal with the rejection of my father when nobody's dealing with this? Nobody's dealing with this mental status stuff. How do I, as a child, deal with the rejection of my father? And then on top of being rejected by my father, how do I deal with the rejection of the church? This is why we're dealing with hurt people and hurt people will hurt people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's true. That's what it is. So I begin to ask God, God, is it that it's church hurt? 
Or is it that we're a bunch of people with mental issues? Sandra Week said we are not taught this. We're not. No, we're not. We're not taught the proper way. We're not taught that God is concerned about our mental aware, our mental health. We're not taught that God. We, we're told keep your mind stayed on Him, and He'll keep your mind. And that what they told us: keep your mind stayed on Him, and He'll keep your mind in perfect peace. If you're dealing with all of that, that's because you ain't got your mind on Jesus. The only reason I'm still breathing and I didn't slit my wrist is because my mind was on Jesus. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. That is so real. That is really. That is so real.
You can get the encouragement that you need in the word. And when it uh, runs beyond us, we will outsource and get you the resources that you need in order to help you to make it through this time. This is not the time for you to be proud. Mm -mm. This is not the time for you to be um, prideful in your heart. This isn't the time for you to sit at home talking about I can't tell nobody what I'm going through and trying to deal with it on your own. Right. This is the time for you to reach out and for you to say, I need help. Amen. And I promise you, Lady House and I will partner up and get you the help that you need. Amen. Why are you talking about this, Apostle? Because it's heavy on my heart. It's heavy on my heart because of the time that we are living in. The time that we are living in, we're living in a time of uncertainty. We're living in a time that we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Yep, we, have no idea. we don't know what the next minute is going to bring. And we're living in a time that our normal is not normal anymore. Nope. So I'm saying to every one of you that are um, that are a part of this live tonight, don't allow yourself to sit there and suffer in silence. Those of you that are in this room, don't allow yourself to suffer in silence. Please, ma'am, please, sirs, if you need the help, say you need it. Say you need it, yeah. Speak up. Amen. Speak up. Close mouths don't get fed. Yeah. And we're here to help you. We're here to help you. All right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. We thank you, God, for being concerned about just all of us, the, the holistic man. We thank you, Lord, for being that God. We thank you for being our healer and our deliverer. Thank you for being our keeper. God, even now as we pray, Lord, we pray for those that are in this building and we pray for those that are on these lives tonight. God, that you would allow our hearts and our minds, oh God, to line up with your word and to, to hear your concern for us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We come against oppression and de depression. We come against suicide. We come against uh, cutting. We come against uh, self hate. We come against it tonight in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now, God, that you will allow uh, the eyes to flow water. God, we thank you that you will allow the tears to come back, oh God. That we will get a relief, oh God. One, oh God, if we if we hold in too much, God will blow a pipe. And so tonight we ask you to break the dam in us, oh God. Break the dam in us. Allow us to cry again. Allow us to cry again. Allow emotion to come back again. For God, it is healthy for us to cry, but there is healing in our tears, oh God. Allow the tears to flow tonight in the name of Jesus. God, let us not uh, uh, become bitter. Let us not become angry. Let us not, oh God, become all of these negative things, but God, we ask you now, God, to break the dam tonight. God, allow that healing to flow. Allow that healing to you to flow in the name of Jesus and we thank you tonight God that you're ministering to the heart of that woman that you're ministering to the heart of that man we thank you tonight that you're ministering to the hearts of your people that young lady that's dealing with stress you're ministering to her heart we thank you that that young man that's dealing with stress and he's been very mean that you're dealing with him for God we thank you tonight God that you're not that God that wants to judge the people but you're that God that wants to deliver the people. We thank you for being such a deliverer, such a healer, such a mind regulator, such a heart fixer. We give you glory tonight, God, that you're moving amongst your people. Even now, while we pray, we release peace in the atmosphere. Even tonight, while we pray, we release joy in the atmosphere. Even tonight, while we pray, oh God, we release
release, oh God, the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, the spirit of laughter in the name of Jesus. We pray for that woman in that house that's dealing with those children, that man that's dealing with those children. We pray now, God, that you would cause love to flow from heart to heart in the name of Jesus. We pray against abuse tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, protect them. Protect our children. Protect our parents. Protect those teachers. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, the spirit of depression that's sweeping over the land. God, we bust it up tonight in Jesus' name. The spirit of depression that's sweeping over the land. Even while we've been, oh God, shut in our houses. We've been shut up in our bedrooms. We've been shut up, oh God, in our houses. We thank you now, God, that you will cause peace that surpasses all understanding to rest, rule, and abide in our houses. We come against every devil in him, every spirit, every principality, every ruler in high places. And we thank you now, God, that you will cause the spirit of oppression to be broken. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of oppression, we come against you now. In the name of Jesus, God, we come against the spirit of slavery now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you now that you're busting up, God, the plans of the enemy, the plans to defeat, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory tonight. God, that you're moving by your power and by your anointing. God, that you're causing every pillar to be broken. That you're causing the back of the enemy to be broken. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we come against every devil and him tonight. God, we war in the spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth and begin to clap your hands in here. Oh God, we speak victory now. And every devil is defeated. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Every enemy is scattered. In the name of Jesus. Call them to fall on our right side and to fall on our left side. And when the enemy came to eat of my flesh, oh God, you caused them to fall. You caused them to turn on each other. You caused them to kill up each other. In the name of Jesus, God, we come roaming tonight. We pull that man back from suicide. We pull that woman back from suicide. We snatch them back from the hand of the enemy. We snatch them back from the traps and the snares. In the name of Jesus, oh God, oh God, oh God tonight, 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 we warn, we warn now, we warn in Jesus' name, we call you back in Jesus' name, we decree and declare over your life, victory is your name, in Jesus' name, we come against it tonight, we come against the wrestling in your mind, we come against in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we break up in the bloodline curse. We break up in the bloodline curse. We go back to your childhood and we deal with every curse. Every curse over your life. Every wrong word that was spoken. We come against it tonight. In the name of Jesus, I wish I had somebody that would pray with me tonight. I feel prayer in my belly. In the name of Jesus, oh God, oh God, oh God tonight, oh God, oh God, we call upon the one that answers by fire, we call upon the one that answers by fire, and we said burn it up, burn up the desire to harm themselves, burn it up, burn up the desire for suicide, burn it up God. Jesus, we call upon you tonight. You are the only one that we have. You are the only hope that we have. We call upon you tonight. We believe you for your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, have your way in the homes of your people. In the name of Jesus, have your way in the bedrooms. In the name of Jesus, have your way in the living rooms. In the name of Jesus, have your way tonight. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Come, 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 Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Bless you. We will have our um, pillow talk discussion on Friday night at 6 o'clock. Um, 
as we will talk about um, mental um, our mental status, the mental status of the church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We will talk about the mental status of the church, and I'm going to give you just a little bit of our topics that we'll talk about within that. Some bullet points that we'll hit is. It's okay, woman. Well, don't you fall. Amen. Bless you. It is. Was there a pandemic taking place in the black church before COVID-19 was a problem? Is there a way to rebuild after all the hurt and pain that people are facing in this time? How can we as leaders assist the people that God has trusted to us? to lead during this time of uncertainty. How can I keep my mental status in a good place when nothing around me is normal anymore? All right? These are some of the topics that we will discuss or some of the bullet points that we will discuss during our discussion on Pillow Talk on Friday night. All right. Lady House is going to be here for the beginning and then she'll leave me and she'll go dance. Um, and then uh, uh, Kim, Sister Kimberly Parker, will come and sit in her stead and help me co host. Amen. 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 So we are extremely excited about our pillow talk on Friday night. On Sunday, um, we will be back here at 2 o'clock. All right? And then at 4 o'clock, I believe it is. Is it 4? 5, five o'clock. Well, they started at 4. We'll be there at 5. <laughs> Amen. At 5 o'clock, meaning that we'll get out of church, and then I will be going over to preach at New Life Apostolic, at New Life Apostolic Church. All right? That is where we went before. Mm -hmm. Over yonder, Highway. off of Lily Highway. Highway. All right, so I will be there at five ish on Sunday. All right, straight from the pulpit here to over there. So let us uh, govern ourselves accordingly and keep Apostle in prayer. All right, as we are dealing with our own stuff at the box, and we're going to go and handle that over there and get on, get the word out, do what we got to do and get on back and get home. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Again, I pray that this word has blessed you. Amen. Those of you that have joined us by live, will you clap your hands for those that have joined us by live? Amen. God bless you. We love you so much. And for those of you that desire to sow, that information is down there um, pinned for you um, so that you can do that. Um, in this hour, I got to tell everybody thank you for all of the support that we have received at the box. I don't know about nobody else's church, but Alabaster Box ain't struggling. I nailed it. We have not felt the um, the effects of the pandemic. Amen. So you ought to tell God thank you and give God praise because he is still good. So please, ma'am and sirs, continue to do just what you've been doing because it has been a blessing to the house. All right. All right. Let us stand. We're getting out of here. Thank you so much for joining us here at Alabaster Box Christian Ministries. We pray that the word of the Lord has been a blessing. This season that we are in, family, please remember to keep your focus. Don't look to the right nor to the left. Uh, continue to work the thing that God has placed in your hands. Blessings on you, your family, and um, stay safe. Bless Hello again.